Hey, Bass Geek here, and today we're gonna be talking about my favorite October baits. So no matter where you are in the country, October is a time of change. The bass are either chasing shad up into the creeks or they're coming back out to go to their winter holes. And for me, that's why I like to use things like this. This is a finesse swim bait. I've already had a couple of bites down this bank. I can't believe I haven't hooked up just yet, but I'm not quite in the sweet spot yet. And you wanna reel it real slow. This is not a bait that you're gonna cover a lot of water with, but a finesse swim bait is absolutely one that you're gonna use. Now, generally, I'm gonna use two. This is the Domeki Armor Shad, a killer little finesse bait paddle tail, okay? Great little finesse swim bait. And guys, by the way, this head I'll actually use on a couple of different October setups I'll be talking about throughout this video. This is the Angler Tungsten. This is a 3 8 ounce head. Now. I will tell you if I'm fishing up here, generally I'm going to like say a quarter or an eighth, depending on how flat it is when I'm fishing up shallow. But this bank drops off pretty steep. So for me, that three eighths ounce head, not a problem at all. Now, the thing about it is you wanna reel it real slow. You wanna hit those transition areas, those areas, channel swings, points deep lay downs, rock piles, humps, those areas where the bass can come and go throughout October. This is a great little swim bait and you can fish it so many different ways. The other swim bait that I like is the Kitek, the 2.8, the 3.3, great little swim baits right there on the same exact head. The big thing with a swim bait is make sure you're reeling it super slow. Contour the bottom, especially if the bass are moving out, which is what's happening on this lake right now. They've already fed. We're in the low 60s, upper 50s, and most of these largemouth have packed on the shad. The next bait is a finesse bait. And it's something that you're gonna see me use a lot. Again, that angler tungsten swim bay head, I'm gonna use on this too. And the big key, it's got that 90 degree line tie on it. That's a big deal. This is the Domeki rig. There's a whole video I'm doing talking about the Domeki rig and how it's kind of progressed. You need to make sure you stay tuned or either go back and watch it. I'm not sure when it comes out either before or after this, but you really need to make sure you stay tuned. Now there's two different ways to fish this. One is drop it straight down on the bass, drop it straight down on their head and keep it above them. The other is kind of doing what I'm doing right now. I'm using my forward facing sonar and I'm throwing out there, again, dropping it on their head and kind of tight lining it. Two different techniques kind of coming together in one. I drop it down, drop it into the group of bass, and I just shake it and slowly reel to keep it at that level, and they generally end up eating it. Again, the two baits that I like to use, the Yum FF Sonar Minnow, forward facing Sonar Minnow, and of course, the tried and true Armor Shad by Domeki, hence the Domeki rig's name. Now, don't think you have to have forward facing Sonar to do this. This is actually a killer bank beating or from the bank little bait. And what you wanna do, if either way, if you don't have forward facing sonar, let's say you could do it two different ways. Let's say you got busting bass. This is great, throw right out there on them and just work it back, reeling it very slow. If you're on the bank, do the same thing. You don't even have to have busting bass and either you can actually go down a bank like this bank over here, make a nice long cast. And if I was fishing from the shoreline, of course I'd be casting out. I'd let the bait sink to the bottom. And then what I would do is I would raise my rod tip and raise that bait. And you can see just barely shake. You want it every once in a while to touch the bottom. 
when it touches the bottom give it a little hop especially if you're on the shore if you're fishing from the bank and then just keep a nice steady slow reel guys this is a huge dying shad imitator and it can catch you some very big bass especially as it gets colder it imitates a dying shad better than anything out there now let's talk about crankbaits i left all my crankbait rods at the house but i'm going to tell you this time of year there's three crankbaits that i'm really going to use it's going to be any of the little johns because they've got flat sides they're going to be great in the clear water that i fish it's going to be any of the rock crawlers on breezy windy days a little more wind than this or if it's in dirtier water and these are going to be crankbaits that i'm going to use pretty much through the winter time the other is going to be old faithful and that's going to be the rapala shad wrap now you can mix and match a whole bunch in but especially as we start getting into the colder water those are going to be the three that i like to use the shad wrap is going to be that really finessey dead slick calm you know crankbait day colder water that little john is going to be that kind of happy medium and then you've got the rock crawler which you can do so much with and i'm such a big fan of but that's pretty much what you're going to be doing when it comes to cranking now you throw a lot of different crankbaits depending on your water those are three of my favorites to start throwing and pick up this time of year now this time of year generally for me the buzzbait bite starts to go down now i know a lot of you guys on the tennessee river you guys have got a great frog bite going for me that's not so much the case now if i go down that way which isn't far from me yes i will pick a frog up up this way generally i'm not picking the frog up uh as you can see there's not a lot of grass up here now all that being said the bites that tend to be the best are this of course a good old walking bait now guys anytime i'm going to throw a walking bait it's probably going to be a heading and i'm probably if there's chop on the water i'm going to pick up something like a sexy dog that's got a little bit of, of a lip on it that's going to spit a little bit more water or a great one would be the shower blow by the evergreen company the other thing i'm going to pick up you guys know it you love it you hear me talk about it all the time especially this time of year and i'm going to fish it over a lot of those laydowns because as it gets cold that wood sticking up out of the water holds a little more heat because it's darker and that's going to be the good old labina rico the rico popper guys is money this time of year over laydowns now another top water that i've got to throw in there and i know you're going to think this is weird you're going to be like this is not a top water i'm going to do a video on it toward the end of october for me the first of november even well into november and the first of december this is the long a this is one of the best wake baits you're ever going to throw small mouth love it they will destroy it large mouth will also eat it but if you're around small mouth trust me on this i've got some videos about it you need to go watch them we'll do an updated version but this is an incredible bait and you know take a warehouse don't have these on there anymore so you have to go to Lornet. but the good news is you got a 15 percent discount i will put everything in this video in the description but this makes an incredible wake bait. It is not a jerk bait. You do not fish it like a jerk bait. You put it on a spinning reel and you use it as a wake bait. Last but not least, a finesse jig. Man, this time of year is a great time of year to throw that finesse jig. October, when those new moons and full moons hit, you can get some great bites. When they're drawing the water down, you can get some great bites. A finesse jig, when the bass slow down you can drag it you can hop it it does so many different things and it continues to get bites all through the winter time all right geeks hey forgive me 
we managed to lose the outro on the water somewhere. So I'm just going to do the outro now. You know, like I said, October is all about movement. No matter where you are, from down south to up north, they're either coming or going. So use baits that you can cover a lot of water with. And when you don't, when it's maybe those bluebird dead slick days, pick those high percentage areas, places where they're going to stop, you know, lay downs that run out to the creek channel, points that run out to the creek channel, secondary points up and down those creeks, those main, um, and, and one tip I can give you, active water. A lot of times they'll push into ditches and bays, but on like Highlands Reservoirs, like I fish and reservoirs that's got a lot of, you know, creeks or ditches, ditches don't have consistently running water coming into them, feeding them. Creeks always have running water, unless I guess you're in a major, major drought. But there's a creek somewhere or multiple creeks somewhere feeding in there. That's where the shad like to go. Now, as always, guys, thank you very much. All the support that we've been getting here lately, we're trying to get ramped back up. We've got some really cool buyer's guides that are going to be coming out in, at the 1st of November. Uh, so you guys can uh, look for big sales. You guys can look for the things that so far this year, for me, have been the most productive. That's how I do it. You know, I don't talk about why well, I use this or I use that. I talk about I've caught fish on this or that, and this is the tools that have helped me do it more. So we'll be doing four of those videos, kind of like we did last year, but we got them out real late. We're going to try and get them out a little earlier so they can actually help you guys out this year. Hey, love my hashtag 100% guys. Love you guys. Thanks for watching 100% of the videos. Like I always say, that is the best way to support the channel. Doesn't cost you a thing. Spend a little bit of time. Time is money, so maybe it does cost you something. I don't know. Let's not get into that argument, right? All that being said, thank you. Hey, guys, November the 8th, so it's going to be a Tuesday, will be our next live stream. We're going to have Josh King on. You guys have seen me fish with him before. Well, he just so happened to win on Kentucky Lake the Kayak Tennessee State Kayak Championship. So he's going to be actually in-house at Kirkland's Restaurant Big Stone Gap. Man, y'all come out. We do. We give away a, a prize pack to the people in the live audience and to the people in, you know, of course, online. We got some really cool, I hope it comes in, but we got some really cool coming for the prize packs next month. Uh, or, well, yeah, I guess it is next month. But anyway, all that said, anything else, everything in this video will be in the description. It's Tackle Warehouse links or Lornet links. And uh, those do also help the channel. If you're going to buy stuff, use those links. It supports the channel. Just helps me pretty soon make a boat payment, right? But uh, anyway, no matter what, just thanks for being here. And as always, like it if you like it. Don't forget to subscribe. Make sure you ring that bell so you get the notifications when these videos come out. 100% Watch Squad. And as always, you guys rock. <laughs>